Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Bread. No, it is Bubble Talk. Instead of talking about, you know, the, all the great things we talked about the last couple of weeks, we're going to switch to just bubble tea, right? I want you to tell me what your favorite bubble tea is. Mine is black tea with fresh milk with grass jelly, 0% sugar. Yes, it sounds blasphemous, but I want 0% sugar. Just kidding. Okay, either way, welcome to Bubble Talk uh, here in Southeast Asia. Uh, I'm here in Singapore right now. And today, of course, all of you have been waiting for this week's topic of gaining from pain. Why do I suffer and how do I overcome this suffering? Now, interestingly, a lot of people talk about this. Like you go on the internet talking about, you know, gaining from pain. And they always talk about like working out. Like, oh, you, your muscles can't grow unless you, you hurt yourself, right? And you have all these people telling you that it's so good to go through suffering. Okay, now, I'm not going to tell you that today. I will not say that to you. I'm not going to say to you, hey, suffering is good. Because more than this, actually, you know, a funny thing is, you know, I'm exercising a lot these days, as you can tell. No? Okay. So I've been working a lot these days, and someone told me one of the most classic lines, and they said to me, I was like, oh, man, my body's so sore. And you know what they said to me? They said, pain is weakness leaving your body. And I was inspired, and I wasn't, but I was. Right? So working out, we talk about this pain and like, oh, if you don't have the pain, you don't gain much, right? Or, you know, whenever they talk about uh, how do you overcome, what do they say? They say, just fight through it, right? You got to fight through with everything that you have. And when we think about this, actually, the suffering that we go through in life is actually a lot different than like working out, Right? It's different than like playing a soccer game, even though we use those analogies all the time. So today, I'm going to teach you two important things. Number one is, where does the suffering come from? And number two is, understanding the suffering. If you cannot understand it, it's very difficult to overcome. So everyone, get ready, because today we're going to talk about suffering in a new way. And of course, like the last three weeks, we're going to talk about it through the most spiritual and the book of wisdom. We're going to go through the Bible today with a few sh short scriptures. So let's start. Let's start with point number one. Where does suffering come from? Okay? You got to think about this. Where does suffering come from? So when we think about suffering, would you think about suffering in your life like you broke your arm or you broke your leg or you're going through like torture? And in most cases, no one goes through that type of experience. Like no one goes through that prolonged experience of like breaking your arm in five places and then the bones like you get crushed and crumble and you can't move it and there's pain all the time. Like no one goes through that. Right? Not many people go through that. The type of suffering that we go through is what type of suffering? Let me give you an experience that I had in high school. Okay? So during high school, I was uh, the student union president. Okay? So, you know, I, I had, you know, I was kind of cool, right, back then. But what happened was, uh, school's about to end, and of course you have the announcements on the PA system. And school's about to end, and then the announcement comes up, and it says, Sky, please come to the principal's office. So, you know, once everyone in my classroom heard that, what do you think the reaction of the students were? They're like, ooh, ooh. I'm thinking like, what the heck just happened? So now I am slowly walking towards the principal's office. And what is happening? Suffering. Right? Just complete suffering of like, what did I do? What did I do? And I'm thinking about all the bad things I've done at school, just getting ready to confess it. Right? Principal, I did this, I did this, I did this. And I sit there and like, I, I get to the principal's office and they're like, oh, please wait at this seat. And I see the principal in there. And he looks at me very strange. Like he looks at me and goes, and I'm like, oh no. And I'm sitting down just kind of waiting. Like, I, I actually, you know, I'm going to be honest. I actually started praying. I'm like, God, what did I do? Please God, please God, don't let me. And then the principal comes out. And the principal knows me because I'm the student, student, count, student union president, right? And this, the principal comes out and says, hey, what you doing here? I'm like, you call me to the office. And he says, oh, wrong person, my mistake. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I was so relieved. But the one thing you realize from that moment is what? Where does the suffering actually come from? And we're gonna take a look at a scripture too that's gonna teach us about this even better. It's in the book of Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, right? And the Proverbs chapter four, verse 23 says what? It says, guard your heart because it is the wellspring of life. You see, where does, you know, why is your heart so, but why do you have to guard it? 
Your heart can give you a good life. It can give you that happiness and that joy, but why do you need to guard it? Because negative and, and, and thoughts you don't really want can come into your heart, into your brain, into your mind and your thoughts. What happens is most of the time, we're not going through the suffering we think of breaking limbs or, or like the suffering that happens of being hurt physically, but most people go through a different type of suffering and most of the suffering is all happening up here. Suffering comes from your mind, right? The pain goes away quick, but it's the pain that lives in your head that keeps going over and over and over again. How many people have had this experience before? You have a friend that says something to you, but in your mind, you think they meant something to like diss you, to disrespect you, right? And in your mind, you're like, no way. Did they really mean this? And then all day, and even when you're about to sleep, you're thinking about it all the time. You're like, oh, dear, I can't believe they said that to me. I can't believe that. How can they? They're friends with me. And then, and then they think like this. Ah! And then you're like, you know, the next day, you're ready to fight them. You're like, oh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to tell them off, right? Because how dare they say this, right? And then when you meet them, they're like, no, I didn't mean that at all. No, I'm just talking about this. And you're like, Re 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 really? He's like, yeah, no, there was nothing. No, I didn't mean anything behind it. Why would you think that? You're my friend. And what happens? All day and all night, you've been suffering in your mind. Why? Because of your own thoughts, because of your own heart, because of your own mind. You see? A lot of this suffering is actually, you're able to escape it. Why? Because most of it is all up here. If suffering is from your head, then the first point I want to give to you this is you have to fix your head first, right? You have to fix your head, but that is another lecture in itself. But we'll talk a little bit about this at the end of what we can do. Now, the second thing I want to talk to you today is about knowing what you suffer, right? Knowing, like, you have to know what you're suffering from. So I was like, what, what does it mean? I'm, do I have to know what I'm suffering from? So I'm going to tell you this is not all suffering is good, right? And you shouldn't be suffering all the time, right? So, so the thing is, I don't want you guys to think when you hear all these motivational talks telling you suffering is good, suffering is good, and the answer is not all suffering is good. But the harder part is how do I discern between which one's good and which one's bad? So I'm going to teach you today, and first we're going to look at an interesting, an interesting uh, Bible verse, okay? It's in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20, it says, How is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. So what are we, what are we learning from this is? Even the Bible is telling us is, yeah, there is a difference of suffering for different things. Some things are not commendable. Some things are not that, they're not beneficial to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split these up into two parts. Okay, there are two types of suffering in life. The first is what you call necessary suffering, and the second thing is unnecessary suffering. Okay, so what's the difference between the two, and how can I differentiate between the two? So, first, let's take a look at necessary suffering. Now, necessary suffering has to do with growth, it's something necessary in life. For instance, you have to learn how to walk. It's a, it's a necessary part of life. You have to learn to walk. And what's going to happen is when you walk for the first time, your legs aren't strong enough, you fall over. You get up, you fall over. You get up, you fall over. And you're going through this suffering for growth. It's something that is necessary in your life. When you're learning how to talk, you're going to suffer because you can't communicate. You cry. What do you say? And you're not sure what's going on, right? You suffer when you go to school. It's necessary to learn things in life. It is absolutely necessary. And that's why one thing you have to understand here is there are absolutely necess necessary things in life. And if you look at human beings in whole, from the moment we're born, we're kind of born with a blank slate. If you think about that, right? We're born with nothing in our minds. How do I know? Because nothing comes out of your mouth. You're not thinking anything. You're just looking around like, what is going on? And what happens is, from the moment of your birth, we are learning and we are growing. Whether it's walking, talking, jumping, running, socializing with people, right? Learning how to talk, how to sense things, 
right? How to feel things, what are emotions? These are all things that we're suffering, but it is necessary, and that's why no one really thinks of it as suffering itself. Why? Because it's necessary. Now, that's not the thing that we're going to talk about today, is because the, that the thing that we're kind of confused with is unnecessary suffering. Now, unnecessary su suffering has nothing to do with growth, nothing at all. Right? So when you have unnecessary, unnecessary suffering, where does that suffer? What is unnecessary? Unnecessary suffering comes from things that are not right. It's not the right thing. Now think about this carefully, right? Like think about lying. People suffer from lying. Because if someone lies to you, you think something, but then they, they go around and stab you behind the back. Right? Or you lie about something and your parents think you're all good and later they find out you were, all, you were lying to them the entire time. They suffer for those things too. Right? If you look at all these different things in life, one of the interesting things is when you don't do things that are right, this is when either you suffer from people doing things not right to you or other people suffer because you don't do right things to them. Like what? What about stealing? Stealing makes people suffer. Is it necessary? No. No one should be stealing. What about assaulting someone, or even verbally assaulting, or bullying someone? These are things that are wrong, right? These are unnecessary sufferings that we don't need to go through, right? And this is the thing you have to look in life is, there are many things that you don't need to go through. Many types of suffering that you have to understand in your mind is, no, I don't have to go through this. Things that are not right, things that are not about growth, lying, cheating, you know, like, especially in Singapore, academics is everything. Can you imagine if you were always number two and later you find out number one was always cheating? Can you imagine what would be in your mind that you work so hard, but later you find out the person who is always number one, later you meet them, you know, in university and they tell you, oh, I cheated on every test. Do you know how furious you'd be? Right? That's unnecessary suffering. And this unnecessary suffering is happening either because we do something wrong or because people around us or people in the world are doing things wrong too. It is unnatural and it is not normal. And we have to be able to discern and decipher between those two types of suffering, right? Accept and take on the suffering that comes from growth that comes from things you absolutely need to do. And one thing I need to add in here is, uh, when I told you that human beings are born with a blank slate, the one thing you have to understand is, it's kind of the way that we're created as human beings, right? If you think about human beings in general, we are born as like a learning species. We're born to learn. Everything's about learning. And that's why unnatural things is like, kind of like when you cheat, right? Because you didn't do anything to get it. Let me give an example. Imagine like your mother or some, your, like your wife, you know, you're giving birth to a baby. And the moment you give birth and the head pops out and then the baby says to you, hi mom, how's it going? You'd be like, what the heck is going on? Or what if he just jumps up, cuts his own umbilical cord and starts running around the table? After being born, you'd be like, what the heck is going on? You look at that as so unnatural, right? We look at the sufferings and we know just deeply inside that this is a normal type of suffering. Why? Because... If we were not meant to learn, then the first time the baby gets and falls over, what would you say to the baby? It's like, you dumb baby. How dare you? are so weak. How come you can't walk from the first time you get up? We don't say that. But instead, we encourage them. We pick them up. We encourage them. We pick them up. We encourage them. We pick them up. Why? We already understand deep in our hearts that we are beings that were created to learn constantly. The problem we have is when we learn the wrong things or we succumb to our desires to get things done in a fast way. And I would, you know, you'd call that like the fast food mentality, right? McDonald's, you get it in five minutes, but when your mom cooks, it takes like two, three hours. And actually, it might even take more if you count the time. Well, my mom grows everything in the yard, so then... If, if I count that time, it's like take, it takes months to cook because she, she grows it herself, right? But you go to the supermarket, it takes time. You come back, you cut it up, you cook it. It takes time. Slow food is much healthier than fast food, right? In your mindset, in your mentality, your minds, you also have to think to yourself too, is it's not about getting things quicker. It's about getting things done right and properly. And this is when we become actually more successful in dealing with our sufferings also. Now, let's move on to number three.
Okay. Number three is my third point for the, for the day. And it's going to be, the title is Purpose and Meaning in Suffering. Okay, purpose and meaning in suffering. What does that mean? Let's first take a look at this uh, Bible verse in the book of Psalms. It's chapter 119, verse 50. It's very interesting. It says, my comfort in my suffering is this. Your promise preserves my life. Okay, think about this, okay? The comfort, someone's receiving comfort in their suffering, right? Comfort in my suffering, but what's it come from? It comes from a promise. It comes from something that is better in the future, right? The purpose becomes a very, very important part of our lives. We have to understand this really well. The purpose, if there is suffering with purpose, it becomes worth it. But the interesting thing is, if you suffer for no reason, you become bitter. It's really interesting, right? You got to think about, you know, all the things in your life... People who exercise, why do they exercise? Because they want to be healthier. Because they want to have a nicer shaped body, right? People who, you know, go through the pain of childbirth, they go through it because a living child, you're going to give birth to your own children, right? And that's why every, you know, you see these mothers on TV, you know, they, they have these like, uh, what do you call it, like the, the National Geographics or Discovery Channel. They show you how birth happens. The mother is screaming. She's like, ah, Tears are coming out of her eyes. She's crushing her husband's hand during the time of hard birth, like childbirth. And the husband's like, oh, oh, right? And then he's like, it's like the most painful thing, right? It's so painful. But then the moment the baby comes out, she holds it and she starts crying in joy. Like you think to yourself, like, how does that make any sense? Why? The comfort in my suffering is this, your promise preserves my life. There is something in the future, there's a goal, there's a purpose that is much bigger and better, that all the suffering becomes worth it when you reach that goal, when you reach that purpose. It gives it meaning, right? You have to realize this a lot in our, on our heads too, right? Because why do we go to school? Honestly, we go to school, we go to learn, but yet, more than the learning, all of us go to school because you want to be able to allow your parents to boast about you. No, I'm just kidding, right? All right, so, so the reason why you go to school and the reason why you do it well is because, honestly, you want a degree, and that degree leads to a better job, right? Which leads to a better life with having more money physically in this world, right? So the thing is to think about this is like, okay, that makes sense. But imagine going to school for four years, becoming a doctor for seven years, and you you don't get a job, and you don't get a degree. What would you think? What would you honestly think at the end of it? Like, oh, by the way, oh, the program changed. You need to go through another program. You're like, what? Yeah, the last seven years, we don't count them anymore. How would you feel? Right? How angry, how bitter would you be in your heart? And what would you start saying about your school on your, like, social media? What would you start saying? See, what happens is, if there is no purpose and you go through suffering, it leads to bitterness. You become bitter. But what happens if you're bitter for a long time? You actually become cruel. Not even just cruel, you begin to hurt people. You become hurtful. So when someone, someone is so happy that they got into your school, what do you say? No, my school's junk. I can't believe you went to this school. This person worked so hard to get into that school, but now you're telling them, this school sucks. You shouldn't even come here. What a waste of money. And all of a sudden, this person's hurt. Why? Because you went through suffering. You went through this bitterness. Or you went through this suffering with no reason, with no meaning. It made you bitter. And then what happens in the end? You become cruel and you begin hurt, become hurtful to other people. You see, the best way to look at suffering, um, meaningful type of suffering, and I think the one that we can understand the best is actually a job. Because honestly, you are taking your time out and you are suffering doing something you don't really want to do, right? Like getting a part to work at Starbucks, whatever it is. I, actually, I'd enjoy that, making coffee. But if you work in a job, you spend time and you suffer right? Doing things for other people. But what makes it worth it? It is money, 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 right? (laughs) Like everything's about money, right? So here's the thing. I ask this question all the time to people to see whether something's worth it or not. So you have to think to yourself is, is it worth it or not, right? Is the suffering worth it or not? So let me give you this, this, this interesting, uh, uh, question for everyone here. Let's say, 
I come to you and I say, hey, guess what? For 365 days, I want you to suffer. Like suffer the worst suffering you've ever suffered in your suffering, suffering life. Right? And you're like, what? And the question is, would you want to do it? And the answer is no. Like, of course, at the end of it, it's not, it doesn't mean like we're going to break your arms and, you know, look, just suffering, going through suffering. So he says to you, yeah, 365 years, I want, I want you to suffer. And you'd be like, no, I don't want to suffer. But then he says to you, but if you go through the 365 days of suffering, at the end of that year, I will give you $1,000. And you guys would say, uh-uh-uh. All right, 10,000. No way, 100,000. Nope, 1 million. Huh. What if I give you 10 million? And you know what? Like just in this room too, there's only like five people in this room that are recording. How many people in the room would, would suffer 365? You know, no, no broken arms, nothing's gonna be missing at the end of the year, just suffering, right? How many of you be willing to do it for $10 million? There's one. Two, 10 million? No, not 10 million. How about uh, 50 million? Oh, yeah, well, of course, the 10 million will do 50 million. 50 million? 50 million? No? You wouldn't do it for 50 million? 50 million? In the internet world, 50, not even 100 million. 100 million! Who would do it for 100 million? Put your hands up. In the chat rooms, put your hands up. Okay, cool. So think about this. Honestly, in your mind, when it comes to your time and the suffering that you do, in the end, it becomes worth it if it's meaningful enough. It does. Because if I get $100 million, what do I do with it? I save it and my next, my, my children and their children and their children will all be set. We'll never have to worry about money. And for me, that's, that's enough. Actually, honestly, I would have been done at a million. I would have been done at a million. I'd be like, million? Got it. I'll do it for a million, right? But the thing is, whatever it is, human beings... We have, I'm not going to say a price, because it's not about dollars. Because when you have purpose and meaning, it's more than just dollars. What is it? It's about, is that purpose good enough for my suffering? Is it good enough for me to go through all these things? Human beings, we have to realize the purpose has to be worth it. There's got to be meaning in it. And usually, people begin to suffer and become really bitter for two reasons. Number one is, you don't have a purpose and there's no reason why you should suffer. And number two is, is because you've forgotten why. Right? You've forgotten the reason why you were suffering in the first place. Right? I hope that uh, all of you guys understood today because our last point today, of course, is gaining from pain. And the three points that we made today, first was having a healthy mind. And one thing is, uh, having a healthy mind is not just about you just putting positive thoughts into your brain. The one advice I give to you, or actually, I'll give you two advice. Uh, two advice I give to you. Number one is, it all depends on what you input into your brain. If you keep watching things that are like, like, not very good, very negative, suffering and pain and harm. Yeah, that's what's going, putting input. That's what's being input into your brain. That's what you're thinking all the time, right? Number, uh, which means that you should be looking at good things, right? Things that give you good thoughts, right? Input that is good, which also includes my second advice is it's also a big influence in our in our thoughts and our in our mental health are the people around us, right? Do you have good, positive, impactful people around us? Right? And this is something that you also have to look at in your life. Because if you don't, if you have negative people, people are always hurting you, then this causes our minds to be thinking in a drastically different way. The second thing we learned today, obviously, was necessary and unnecessary suffering. And what, I'm, what is this talking about? It's about discerning well. Don't put all suffering into one basket and throw it all away. Because then even the good suffering is thrown away. No, there are some things you do need to suffer through to grow in life. Don't put suffering into one basket, throw it aside, and then whenever suffering happens, you're like, oh, why am I suffering? No, it's not that. You have to think to yourself is, okay, is this suffering towards my growth or not? Or is this unnecessary? Okay? And the last thing today we talked about just, just right now was purpose and meaning. And I hope that the two things you, you have to keep in your mind is you either don't have a purpose and you don't know why, or the second thing is, is you've forgotten why you were doing it in the first place, and this is why you're suffering, uh, and you feel like the suffering has no meaning.
Okay. I hope everyone had a wonderful day today. I had a wonderful time speaking to you. This is my last time speaking in Singapore. I'll be going to, Sing- I'll be going to Malaysia tonight. So hopefully we'll be seeing you again next week. Everyone have a wonderful day and we're going to head to the question and answer time.